Good evening, everyone. I'm Sam Barsky. Tonight, this is Knitting with Sam Barsky here. This is Season 1, Episode 2. As you notice, look what I'm wearing today. Since this is Martin Luther King's Day, I'm wearing my Martin Luther King sweater, which has a picture of the I Have a Dream speech. So, anyway, this... Uh, this week, what I'm going to talk about is, first of all, I just got back from Vogue Knitting Live, and I have a lot to tell everyone about that. Secondly, I'm going to tell everyone about the sweater that I'm wearing. And third, I'm going to tell everyone about my work in progress, and I'll do a little work on it. And fourth and finally, I'm going to tell more about what this show will be like in the future. So here we go. So over the weekend at Vogue Knitting Live, it was a really fun experience. I taught two classes. I actually taught one class and gave one lecture. First, yesterday morning, I gave a lecture in front of a crowd about my story, which I've done many times before. And since this was in New York, and it was at Times Square at the Marriott Marquis. I focused on my Times Square sweater in my speech, in addition to a lot of the other ones. So, so that's number one. The other thing that was was in it was was I talked about oh my my work in progress a little and. Certain other things. So, as I showed you, my work in progress is my Rubik's Cube sweater. And I had just finished an ice skating sweater. So, uh, the ice skating sweater I wore there when I was at Rockefeller Center. Many of you saw it on my Facebook page already or in one of the groups. So anyway, I'm, we're going to get busy on here, but one of the other things I did at Vogue Knitting Live was I taught a class, a three-hour class about my skills, and I was teaching people different techniques they should know to make sweaters like this. Although, and besides, I met lots of people there, lots of friends who I already knew. I made a lot of new friends. It was a very ex Exciting experience. There were thousands of people there. So many I couldn't even say hello to all of them. I couldn't even meet everyone. I would have very much loved to. I admired all the knitwear I saw people wearing. It was like a fashion show. Everyone had two or three pieces of knitwear. They had sweaters, scarves, shawls, hats, gloves, everything you name it. Even more unusual stuff. Hi to everyone who's watching me. So here we're going to get started on the Rubik's Cube sweater, and we're going to start a pearl row. As you see at the bottom, here's a solved cube. This is the back, so I decided to put the colors orange, green, and white on it. On the front, there's going to be another solved cube that's going to have the other three colors, which are the brighter colors, red, blue, and yellow. So I'm starting on a pearl row, so you can see what I'm doing, what the work is like. And it's very easy, straightforward knitting up until I get to the cube area. Then I have to carefully concentrate on what stitches are what colors and carrying across. That's where it gets to be more complicated. So, so anyway... During our trip to New York, we did a lot of interesting things besides the Vogue Knitting Live as well. One of the nice things we did was we went on a tour of Carnegie Hall. We stayed in a hotel that was across the street from Carnegie Hall, and we discovered that they give tours. So we signed up for a tour there, and it was really interesting. And I posted pictures of the tour on Facebook, and I got quite a lot of suggestions for a Carnegie Hall sweater. Of course, it's not in my immediate future, but maybe one day. But what I'm thinking more about are some of the Colorado sweaters I have to do for 
an upcoming trip in the summer, which I pretty much have agreed to do. So what I'm doing here, I'm moving the cube over. These three colors have to do with the side, the side which is like a straight side. This is more like a diagonal, so I need one, two, and I have to make a third color here. But that's that can wait till the next row. First, I'm going to pearl these two in black. So this is black here, and then this is black over here, and then these two are in, in yellow. This one is in yellow. So here, I have to do just this one stitch in yellow, and then I do two black and two green after this. And then it's after that, it's going to be black till the end of the row. I'll get a little break on this. So here we have a little problem with a drop stitch, which happened because I accidentally broke a needle and had to transfer to other needles. So I dropped a couple of stitches in the process. So here, these are finished. So I can just knit with black till the end of the row. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cross the red on top of the black and just use this black to go to the end of this black section here, finishing up the cube. And then I'll, I'll use different colors in the next row. So I do these in black, then I have to cross this orange over as well. So I do these next few stitches in black on top of the orange. The black is a little tangled in here, so I'm just going to loosen this up a little. In order to loosen it up, I'm going to follow the black yarn just to get a few more inches of it free to cover this. There, that should be enough to get to the end of the cube here. And then here's the white for this white square. That crosses over the black. There we go. And then it, we finish the cube for this row. Now we're going to just do this in gray till the end of the row. So the gray crosses under the white. This is what happens when you change color. You always have to cross the yarn in order to avoid a space. Crossing the yarn, I always teach this to my students, is one of the, it's like the most important thing to do to avoid a space. Otherwise you end up with a hole in it. And this prevents that. Like many people I find are anxious about color changes. If you simply know the rule of crossing the yarns, color changes come easy after that. Really the hardest part of all is the tangling. So I'm going to just knit this in gray till the end of the row. And then I'm going to do a knit row. So you'll get to see this on the inside, what this looks like. And you'll get you're going to end up seeing a lot of tangling, a big jumbo of colors there that I'm using to make the, all the different colors of the cube. So I'm going to do a third row of three here and then finish up what it, there is here. And there is a mistake I'm going to correct and I can correct it when I go down in which I meant this to be orange, black here, and I did orange, so I'll correct that on the way back around. So for now, I'm just going to keep on knitting in gray, and you'll get to see me correct a mistake in the next row. This is proving to be quite a hard project to do, because 
The cubes have so many colors in them. So, it's just a few stitches away from the cube. As you remember, I did the last row in black, and now I'm going to have to do colors on top. So the first stitch, as always, is in black. And now I'm going to have to pick a color. I wanted to, I already have used all six colors here, so I can do any color, but I want it to be a variety. And what I have down here, I think I'm going to use yellow here. So what I'm going to do is pull the yellow loose a little. I'm not going to worry about fully untangling it because in another few more rows, I won't even need to worry about it anymore. So I'm just going to pull the yellow across like that. It goes diagonally across and knit two stitches in yellow. Crossing it under, as you notice, I crossed it under both the white and the gray. Then I'm going to take the black and do the next stitch. As you notice, there's an orange stitch here, and I wanted it to be a black stitch. So here's where I correct. Actually, I realized what the mistake was. It's a drop stitch. So what we're going to do to correct the drop stitch, I'm putting this black on the orange, and I'm going to pull this orange off, and there's the black stitch. That solves the problem. So now I'm going to have to pick a color to do here. I want it to look different from the other things. I, I think I'm going to use green this time. What matters is it looks like a variety of different colors. It doesn't necessarily matter if it's any exact color in any location. So I'm going to do two stitches in green with this. And this has enough green to get to the end. And then I'll do another stitch in black and pick another color. So. Basically, I'm picking the color that is easiest, it's most accessible. That's how I do it a lot of the time. And it shows a variety of different colors. I'm going to use blue in this one. Here's the blue. I'm crossing the blue under both this orange from the previous square and the black. And I'm going to knit two stitches in blue. And I'm going to take the black and go across the two blue stitches here. Now here's the, the green stitch. Since these are diagonal, this green will be replaced on the row above with a black, and then one more green stitch. Then we have another black stitch. And then it's time to pick a color. So I see there's orange here. That's a pretty close unused color here from this thread so I'm going to do this next square in orange there it is and then the next one is black but before doing the black stitch I'm going to take the yellow the tail so I can pull it out cross it over here and knit that in black the next one comes in black now this stitch I once again I pick a color so I see Red is easily accessible. I'm going to do it in red. And then I do another black stitch. But before I do the black stitch, I'm going to take both the red and the gray and cross it over. And then the black goes underneath, knit another black stitch. And now the rest of here goes in gray. The rest of the row will be easy. It'll be in gray. So I can tell you about other things while here. So one of the things that I did also were some meet and greets I did at the Vogue Knitting Live. One of them was scheduled. The other two were not. So between one of the scheduled meet and greet session I have was at Nitty City in it's a yarn shop on 79th Street in Manhattan where I gave a presentation last year in June. So, Nitty City invited me to do a meet and greet at their booth at which was at Vogue Knitting at 
they had a booth there. So I came there. I was supposed to be there from 12 to 1. But after I finished giving my lecture at noon, it took me until 12.30 to get there. Because I had to pack up my sweaters. And I had four big suitcases of sweaters. I had to move from there to my station, which was on a different floor. And then I had to get to the Nitty City booth. And it, this is kind of funny, but walking around the convention area was an obstacle course of people who really badly wanted to meet me. It was just so funny. So it wasn't easy. It wasn't like I could just walk very quickly anywhere. So I had to say hello to a lot of people who were greeting me. I had to I, I, a lot of people wanted selfies. Some people just wanted to see my sweaters. And I had a station. I actually had the first station when you came off the escalator on the seventh floor. And I had some sweaters laid out there. Most of the time I didn't feel safe leaving them unattended. But I did get people to watch them at times. And to attend to my table. Some of my neighbors helped me out. So I did lay five sweaters there most of the time. And I also did some other unplanned meet and greets there. I sat there at certain times each of the days and people got to meet me in person who had always, had known about my sweaters from the internet for a long time. So at least I got to dedicate some time to it. So I was happy about that. I didn't do any yarn buying. I was just too busy. And plus, I had a big load of suitcases. So here, we're, I'm, what I'm doing now, to make room for the last part of the last square, I'm stopping before this final gray stitch. And I'm going to knit it in black. So here, I'm going to take this black yarn, go under the gray. Was it? I'm crossing it under the gray. This is the last row I'm going to knit on this show today. And then the next two stitches will be in red. So I'm crossing the red under both the gray and black. This is the last square I can do in this red because look how short it is. But I have the other end of the red. So if I wanted to do any more red squares, I can just do them with that. And then, but it's enough for this. And I'm going to do the next one in black and the next two in orange. So the orange from here goes under the black and then the second orange under the orange and then another black square I have to free up the black a li little before I knit any more stitches from so it's really badly tangled so as I said I'm not worrying about doing a complete untangling which could take a full hour to do in this case instead I'm just getting by until this section of is finished and then I can cut these loose afterwards. After I finish every cube I cut something loose. And I see one of the things that wool does sometimes and certain animal fibers do is forming a donut and that's what can cause yarn to get stuck. And I see there's forming a donut. If you can cut the donut loose you free up a lot of yarn. So here I'm going to pull the black yarn loose. So I got it free for now. So now over this green, since this green square is finished, I'm going to take the green, cross it on top of the black, and then I have to pick another color to do the next section in. So, looking through the colors, I would like to do it in white because there is no white in this area, but I would have to stretch it all the way across here. I might, I think I'm just going to do it in yellow. I have a, enough of this yellow tail to do 
another stitch here, another six stitches here. So I'll just use the yellow. And I'll try to get the white down here to do a stitch or two, a square or two in white there. And here I just do everything the same color as in the previous row. So it'll be a little easier. So I'm taking the blue and crossing under both the yellow and the black. Two blue stitches. And then a black stitch and two green stitches. The green crosses underneath both the blue and the black. Two green stitches. And cross the black stitch over and then yellow is the final color here. I'm going to do, going to do two yellow stitches and then I'll cross do the final one in black and then I'll cross this gray under the black here. So then I can just knit with gray till the end of the row. This, this is proving to be a really hard project. This was actually one of my first ideas because many years ago when I was first trying to find a way to learn how to knit, I had the idea of a Rubik's Cube sweater back then. That was in the mid, in like around the year 1995 or 96. I didn't learn how to knit until 1999. And now I'm finally fulfilling that dream. So here's what we've got so far. I'm going to put the needle cap on. I'm going, and then I can uh, tell you about a few other things about this show. This is only the second episode of the show, and in the future, I'm planning to make it progress even more. So one of the things I would like to do in the future is do episodes, not just in my living room, but in other places too. And when I do that, I want to invite other people onto the show. Other knitters, other people who have other talents to show what they're doing and have guests on. That way I can give other people a chance of being in the spotlight as well with their talents. That's number one. I'm going to look for sponsors in the future. If anyone wants to sponsor a show, they can pay a certain amount. I'll charge based on the number of people who actually watch the video. And uh, what I'll do is, in turn for that, I'll tell on the show, I'll do like a little break in the middle of the show for like a minute or two and tell about the product, whatever they want me to tell about it. I can even bring a sample of the product or a picture of it onto the video and whatever they want me to tell about it, I'll tell about that product or service or whatever. It could be something having to do with knitting or something else. So I'm welcoming sponsors onto my show. And the other thing that I'm planning on doing is I'd like to go mobile with this show. It'll, sometimes I'll go to different locations and as you know, I'm well known for taking pictures in a place. So I'll actually go to some places and I'll do it live in those places so you'll see me taking a picture of a landmark in that location. I would like to do a couple of episodes like that in the future. So I'm going to show you once again my full sweater. So here it is. Here's Dr. Martin Luther King there. This is the Washington Monument. The back of it has the Lincoln Memorial. It's hard to turn to see it. And last but not least, I'll solve a Rubik's Cube on the show. As I is showing in, this is a Rubik's Cube sweater, so I'll solve a Rubik's Cube. The only one I have in my reach right now is a 4x4, four four, which I know how to solve, but it takes a long time. But to speed it up, I'm going to only scramble it so I can solve it like a 3x3 three three cube. I'm not going to turn any of these middle sections. The Rubik's Cube, I find an interesting tool to explain how, 
how infi infinite knitting is, and the the basic three by three Rubik's cube has forty three quintillion possible combinations. That's such a high number that most of them have never been seen and never will be seen because if we wanted to take that many cubes and create each of the possible oh, combinations for the Rubik's Cube, then the effort of doing that, if every human being on Earth participated in it, would take hundreds of years. Not just that, but all the cubes would encircle the Earth hundreds of times. So that that's basically impossible to do. Try to add a fourth the row of squares into it, it gets to be even more. By then it's a number so long that we don't have a name for that number. And then there are cubes, I have some cubes that are five, six, and seven rows across. And it's like, we don't even have a concept of that number. So, to have an understanding of how that compares to knitting, There are so many different yarns out there, and so many things you can make out of those yarns that there's really no number that can explain the possible number of things you can knit. So anyway, I'm going to start solving. I always like to use yellow as my first color to start solving with. So... The way I start solving a cube is, these are the edge pieces. I'm pretending that each one is a single piece, like this is a 3x3 three three cube. So, I match it up so each edge piece has the one color here and one color here to match up to these centers. Then I'm going to do these sections, which is a corner here and the middle edge pieces. So, I'm going to, here I found one that's yellow, blue, and orange. So I have to find the blue orange like that, which is in the place I want it to be. So I just turn it like that. It lines up and I solved it. Now I'm going to try to find another one that needs to be solved. So here's another one. This is yellow, blue, red. So I first have to bring it to the side like that, turn it like that, and here it's in place. Now I have to, these are on the bottom, so I have to get one of these yellow pieces to be on the side. So here I have yellow, yellow, red, green, and I have to bring these red, green so they match up. So I'm going to turn this like this, and here I have all these matched up, and now I, I can just move it into place. And finally, I have the yellow, orange, here I have to bring these orange is over to here. So in order to do that, without disturbing anything that I've already solved, I turn it like this, then this goes all the way around like this, then I turn it like this, and then this comes here, so I have these lined up, and now these go in place. Now I, I don't have to do anything. Every one of these corners, I just turn it like this, and they happen to be in place. So I Got a lucky break. One step is solved already. Now I have to t do a series of moves to get these so all of these will be white on the bottom in these corners. So I turn it like this. I have to do this a lot of times, several times, until I get it in the correct order. And now, this is the final step, what I have to do. And now, every one of these is white at the bottom. It's in its correct place. So now, I just have to get each of these in the correct place. So, first this is an easy move. And now, these two. The only thing is that these are flipped into the wrong place. So 
I do a series of moves to flip them around. So what I do is I, this is a set of moves that I know already. And there are in, there's instructions you can find on the internet how to solve any Rubik's Cube. So here, now it's solved. So, thank you everyone for joining me. Join me again next week for episode 3 of Knitting with Sam Barsky. Bye everyone!